Welcome to Skyscape's free webinar series. Today's topic is studying for NCLEX, save time and pass the first time. I am Kristen Snowden-Smith from Skyscape and I will be the moderator today. Our speaker today is Dr. Tim Bristol. Tim is a faculty and student success specialist. He works with a number of colleges and universities and resides in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Tim has been utilizing technology in the classroom, clinical and lab setting for over 20 years. His motto is, today we will learn how to learn. I will now hand the floor over to Tim. Thanks a lot, Kristen, and thank you to everyone who's joining us today. I really appreciate your time and um, look forward to sharing with you um, how to manage this whole world of uh, clinical reasoning, critical thinking, clinical judgment, because it's this world that you're going to be practicing in. And just as importantly, it's this world that you're going to see on your exams, that you're going to see on NCLEX. Um, and you want to make sure that you can, you can practice, that you can exercise in this world as you're getting ready for all of those different parts of education and becoming a nurse. So this three-step process that I'm going to propose to you today, it, first and foremost, it helps you save time studying. And this is really important because if you don't save time studying, what happens is you struggle with prioritization, you struggle with getting the right answer, you struggle with managing all the stuff that's being thrown at you. Number two, you have to know what you don't know. Very confusing statement, but you do have to know what you don't know. So I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily identify what you don't know and then focus on that because you've got to do something with what you don't know. If you've got a piece of paper right now or you've got a, a note opened on your phone, just type in the word doing. Doing. NCLEX is a doing exam because nursing is a doing profession. And when your faculty, when your, your instructors are writing exams, they're going to be writing questions about what are you going to do. And, and so we've got to find out what you don't know and then do something with it, okay? Now, I want to caution you. I want to caution you that you're, you're always looking for the, um, the correct answer, the right answer. Let me give you an example. You cannot become a good runner by reading a book on running. What do you do to become a good runner? You have to go run. Critical thinking, clinical judgment is just that. You can't develop your critical thinking skills, your clinical judgment skills. You have to do it. You've got to do it. You can't just read a book about it. You can't just um, listen to your instructor talk about it. You can't watch a video on it. You've got to do it, okay? And so what I'm going to show you is how you can do it more effectively. You can save time, and then you can really focus on the areas that you need to. Now, um, first and foremost, um, Saunders Comprehensive Review. This is, this is a, an amazing NCLEX review book. And what Skyscape has done has turned it into – this app that allows you to save a ton of time while at the same time practicing your critical thinking, your clinical judgment skills on your iPad, on your phone. And it's going to help you save time studying because at the, at the top of every content area, so let's say for instance today in MedSurge, you're in MedSurge and, and they're talking about um, acid base. Well, you go right to that section in your in your uh, skyscape app for saunders you go right to that section you study that maybe you're in fundamentals and you're studying oxygenation or gas exchange you go right to that section and you study that and the important part of the way that they have this set up when you go into this study mode is it takes you right into the doing part of the whole discussion. Now, you might be thinking, well, wait a minute. I've got to learn a bunch of terms. I've got to learn a bunch of areas. I've got to, I've got to memorize these drugs before I can do something with it. Well, that's actually, that actually wastes time. I'm going to show you how using this tool, you save time studying by going right to the doing part of it. And it starts you off with these critical thinking challenges. And it doesn't just leave you hanging, but it links you to the area. It links you to the area. And you can see that that link button right there. It links you to the area where it explains the critical thinking challenge. You learn the content. You learn the medications. You learn the things that you normally would just memorize in the good old days by doing. And this is uber important. I can't overemphasize this. 
because the next step in the process is actually doing it. So when you go back to the app, when you go back to the Skyscape app for uh, Saunders, you're going to see right in the middle, it's going to allow you to get started. And this here we're getting started to help you know what you don't know. Now, um, there's a ton of features here, but I want to point out most importantly, first of all, you pick the area that you're either working on in class, or if you're taking NCLEX, you pick one of the areas that you're, you're struggling with, okay? And then you put it in exam mode. And exam mode is really important. Um, it's really important because you want to make sure that you're replicating what you're training for okay so for instance in the army we we have a test we have a test it's called a pt test and and that pt test includes sit-ups push-ups and running okay now how do you study for that test well you do sit-ups you do push-ups and you run when you're practicing for your exams, when you're practicing for NCLEX, put it in exam mode. This app is very powerful in exam mode because it's going to allow you to replicate that NCLEX. You're going to get question after question. Then when you get to the end, you're going to focus on what you don't know. You're going to focus on the areas where you have a weakness. So you set up your exam, you set up your quiz, you can even give it your own label if you want. It's gonna track all of this for you, very powerful. Takes you through the questions. You're gonna have the select all that apply questions. You're gonna have those tough multiple choice questions. These questions are phenomenal because they test you on the doing part of it. You're not gonna see what's the definition of this or um, what is this drug used for. You're gonna be put in clinical situations exactly like they're gonna do on NCLEX. Because remember, NCLEX is all about doing. You're going through the questions and it's starting to track how you're how you're doing it's starting to track what you know what you don't know and you'll notice that that it'll actually list out and you can click in different areas you can click in different areas you know here's the questions i got correct here's the questions i got correct with multiple attempts here's the questions that i got incorrect this is the area that i really want you to focus on those questions you got incorrect um I want you to focus on them. The other thing that I, I neglected to point out here is you see this bookmark up here? Okay, you see this bookmark? Amazingly awesome feature. And this is an important feature because if there's something that you're, you're testing on and you're like, whoa, I'm just going to make a guess or, oh, I got this wrong, you want to mark that because in, there's going to be a later spot, and I'll show you this in just a moment, where you can go back to those questions and, and revisit the ones you bookmarked. But but what I want you to do is focus on the ones you get incorrect. Oh, here's an example of a, a page full of bookmarked questions. And, and this just really works out really nicely because you can leave them in your bookmark section until you get to go back to them and revisit them. Um, so you, you've answered a question incorrectly. You go back, you review the questions you got incorrect. It's going to give you this rationale. And as you're going through this rationale, I'm going to show you in just a moment some things that you can do with it. Because it's important that you don't just read the rationale and then step aside and go, oh, that's interesting. Especially, especially if you're in the last half of the nursing program, especially if you are, um, if you're practicing for NCLEX, you got to be careful when you just read these rationale. And these rationale are fantastic. They come with testing strategies. They show you how it's broken down, all these different things. But you got to do something with what you're reading. Um, and so as you go through this, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna keep track of those questions that you got wrong. And and I showed you that just a moment ago. You're gonna see that in the QA app, that Skyscape app. You're gonna see that it's gonna show you the questions that you got wrong. Now it's time to do something with it. This is where the Nurse Think Notes notebook comes into play. This notebook is very powerful because it was built around the processing that is absolutely required to pass NCLEX, but just as importantly, to be a nurse at the bedside. When you take a look at the Nurse Think Notes notebook, the first thing you're going to see is the table of contents and the index. The table of contents and the index is built around everything that, that is just absolutely essential. There is no fluff here. 
It's built around everything that's essential for you to pass NCLEX the first time, for you to focus on your, your weaknesses, and for you to do something with those weaknesses. Here are some examples of some NurseSync notes, monographs filled out. Um, and, and, and essentially what these students, uh, what this student did is uh, he went through, he went through um, uh, the content, the material, the concepts, and he starts filling in the information. And I'll show you some examples here. Here's another example from that student. Um, I'll show you some examples here of, of what we're asking you to do when you get something wrong, when you get a question wrong. And I'm not talking like an hour per question, okay? Because that's not real life. Remember, especially when you're taking NCLEX, it's about quick quick access, quick focus on areas um, that are vital to the patient, okay? You, you, and many times, many times, when you're looking at a test item, they're interested in whether or not you can provide what's absolutely essential for this patient in the next five minutes. Not in 30 minutes, not in an hour, but in the next five minutes. So um, the first thing I want to point out about the notes, and, and these, these monographs are the same. Every single page has these spots where you can take notes. And then it's what it's going to have here at the top is a particular content area that relates to that table of contents. So for instance, um, here we have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, here we have hypertension. You're going to have, I, I believe there's like, oh, there's well over 250 different concepts, topics, exemplars. And so whatever it is, you're going to look that up in the index, look that up in the table of contents. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to start thinking about this. So for instance, if, if you just had a test question in the Skyscape app on uh, let's say asthma. Well, what other diseases are like asthma? Well, you might say, okay, COPD, emphysema. Write that down, okay? And then the concept of oxygenation, gas exchange, that everything related to asthma, you're like, what else could be affected by this? Well, we could have uh, nutrition affected by this. We could have mobility affected by this. We have the concept of self. Just compare and contrast. Just think for just a minute, and I literally mean 60 seconds. Just think for just a minute. You just got this question wrong on asthma. Think about an asthma patient. How is their life impacted or what else looks like this asthma situation? And then I want you to jump to the middle of the page to those priority assessments. Okay. And here's, here's where a lot of people struggle on NCLEX. And, and I take responsibility for this as a nursing instructor, I take responsibility because I, when you were in my physical assessment class, I would say, okay, you got 30 minutes, do heart and lungs. Unfortunately, that's not going to be on the exam. What's going to be on the exam is, okay, you've got five minutes, do, do multiple body systems in five minutes, which means you've got to prioritize. So think about this for a moment. You've got a patient with asthma, okay, and that's that patient in that test question that you just got wrong. You got a patient with asthma. What are the top three assessments you must do right now? Well, I'm going to jump on those vitals. I'm going to jump on a lung assessment. I'm going to I'm going to now ask them about medications or what may have worked in the past, or take a look at that MAR if I have access to that. Those assessments, I gotta, I gotta do these priority assessments right now, really quick. And then I jump over to priority interventions. This is the other area where people just struggle mightily when it comes to NCLEX. What are you gonna do for this patient right now? Do you have enough information to act? Because if you do, you have to act. I just was looking at a school's report um, uh, related to where their, their students were strong, their students were weak. Uh, I was looking at this the other day, and, um, and this is very common. I see it a lot. It's called um, reduction of risk potential. And, and sometimes we hear the phrase failure to rescue, and that's under that safe and effective care. You know what? These priority interventions, if you can't do these priority interventions right away, if the if you don't have that list of interventions there quickly accessible, you're gonna you're gonna miss the correct answer on the test. And what's that translate into? Not being able to meet your patient's needs 
at the bedside. Um, priority medications. Again, when we think about asthma, there's many different medications to pick and choose from. What are, you know, and you look at this patient's medication list, okay, this patient with asthma, or, or if you have an older adult as a patient that has multiple medications, what medications do you absolutely have to focus on right now? Um, and, and so each question that you run into on the app, each question that you're taking on the app, and then especially the questions you get wrong, you've got to treat it as if it were a real patient as if you were standing in the hospital next to this individual, as if you were standing in the home next to this individual, and you gotta say, what would be most important for them right now? What would be, what would be most important to consider as far as complications or goals? On the back of the page, you're gonna recognize some areas where you can uh, draw some stick figures, create your own mnemonic. When you get a question wrong, you've got to do something with that question. You can't just say, oh, well, I got it wrong. Read the rationale. You've got to do something with it. One of the most powerful things you can do with it um, is, is take a look at that area on the back of the page. There's some spots where you can create your own little mnemonic or, or uh, acronym, if you will. But there's also in the middle of it is this verbiage from the NCLEX test plan. And the reason I put this here is not for you to write a paragraph. The reason, the reason this is here is so that you can list one or two words somehow that might relate to that question, okay? So for instance, safety. You know, it, it, very rarely, very rarely are you gonna see a question where safe, the word safety is in the question. But here's the funny thing, just about every question has something to do with safety. So what you gotta do, and that's why I put this here, is make it overt, make it clear to yourself as you're looking at this question that you just got wrong, write down one or two words related to safety. Um, you, maybe there's something related to health promotion and maintenance. Maybe there's something psychosocial. You know, so for instance, this patient suffering from an asthma attack, maybe they're anxious about this. Maybe they're, maybe they're self-conscious if they're a teenager, they're self-conscious about using an inhaler, so they don't want to use it out in public. Um, maybe, uh, maybe there's something physiological. Just write down a couple of words here. Down at the bottom, we have some other areas that might cue you um, on what, what went wrong in that question as you're looking at that question. Now, here's, here's the important thing, okay? I've shown you the front of this form. I've shown you the back of this form. Um, you're going to have, you're gonna have all these, all these uh, monographs in the Nurse Think Notes notebook. For each question, just spend, just spend a few minutes on this. Don't, spend, don't sit there for like 30 minutes, an hour, staring at one page, okay? Take a look at the rationale. There's going to be a lot of hints in there, but you got to do something with it. And the Nurse Think Notes notebook is what you do with it. Keep that, that table of contents, keep that index nearby, as this is really going to help you save time studying because it's going to take you right back to these pages. And the other thing I want to point out here, uh, say, for instance, uh, <clears throat> you, you got a question wrong and the patient in the question has a history of smoking nicotine abuse. Say you got a question wrong and the patient in, in the uh, question had uh, struggles with obesity, okay? These page numbers right here, you're going to keep going back to the same pages. So if you're in fundamentals, if you're in uh, med surge, if you're going to keep going back to the same pages across the curriculum. You're going to use this notebook in every course across the curriculum. If you're preparing for NCLEX, Okay, and, and you're, doing, um, you're doing question after question after question. When you get a question wrong, go to your notebook, look it up here in the index, in the table of contents, go back to that page. And if you've gotten a question with this similar topic wrong before, which there is a good chance you have, you'll be able to review that information. You'll recognize your handwriting. You'll be like, that's right. I forgot about that part of helping a patient with obesity, helping a patient with a peptic ulcer, helping a patient with perfusion. So this is a very powerful way to study. And most of it, the, mostly the reason it's so powerful is because it helps you save time studying. And, and, and you not only save time studying, you go back to focusing on what you don't know and then doing something with it. I always encourage someone after you give yourself a quiz, you give yourself an exam, you got to reward yourself. Whether it's going out for a hike, whether it's a, a, a couple of Girl Scout cookies like you see here, my favorite, of course, are thin mints. That should be everybody's favorite, in my opinion. 
or maybe you're a healthy person and you're going to grab a banana or a piece of fruit, but you got to reward yourself. That's, that's the other part of doing, right? All right, so I've shown you the three-step process. Um, I, and, and I'm passionate about this because I've worked with so many students who are, who are struggling in nursing school, nationwide, all different types of programs. I've worked with so many students who have failed NCLEX the first time. Nationwide, all different types of programs. Nobody is immune to this. And it's these three areas. It's these three areas that help you develop that clinical, that clinical judgment skill that is going to be on the NCLEX. It's, it's these skills right here that you develop in fundamentals of nursing, that you develop in maternal child. It's these skills right here that are going to help you be successful. All right. Um, so I do hope that you'll take a look at this. Um, I want to point out, um, are we going to go to Q&A first, uh, Kristen, or did you want me to point them towards the websites? I think we have some questions floating around. Um, we have a couple questions, uh, Tim, and okay. if anyone um, hasn't found it already, go ahead and enter your questions in the question um, chat window, and we can get to those as well. So um, the first question is, what is major top? What is a major topic on current NCLEX that I should study? Oh, that's a great question. That's a great question. Um, you know, I would say that for most people taking NCLEX, um, what I see happening is, okay, we took, what was in your first semester of nursing school? Think about that for a moment. Your first semester of nursing school was usually fundamentals of nursing, foundations of nursing. When you're getting questions wrong, when you're going through your Skyscape Saunders app and you're getting a question wrong, here's what I want to challenge you, okay? I want to challenge you to think about fundamentals to think about foundations of nursing. Because when I work with seniors who are about to take NCLEX, and again, we're talking, we're talking schools all over the nation, different types of programs. When I work with them, one con consistent theme is fundamentals and foundations is a weakness. When I look at their HESI reports, when I look at their, their ATI Kaplan reports, I see that weakness is fundamentals. So when you talk about content area, and, and by content, I mean you can memorize the definition to a word. It's, it's usually almost always fundamentals. But remember, NCLEX is about clinical judgment. It's about that doing. The people at National Council, when they write the NCLEX, they work very hard. They work very hard to make sure that you cannot answer that question just by memorizing the definition to a word just by memorizing what is furosemide for? What is uh, lisinopril for? What's methotrexate used for? They work very hard to write a question that identifies whether or not you're good at critical thinking and clinical judgment. That's why I make such a big deal out of the Nurse Think Notes notebook, that doing piece. That is why people struggle with NCLEX. So foundations is number one. Clinical judgment is number two. Do we have another question, Kristen? Um, what advice do you have for someone taking the NCLEX a second or third time, perhaps? Got it. Second or third time test takers. Many times, um, many times when I talk to them about uh, about their their study habits about what they're doing to prepare um what's usually missing is that that doing component okay um and or um they're they're just they're going in a hundred different directions let me give you an example um in in the saunders skyscape app there's over six thousand questions and we know, we know in the comprehensive review for Saunders, those questions are just top notch because again, they're all about doing. They're, they're assessing whether or not you're good at that doing component. And, and so what, what tends to happen is, um, oh, I failed NCLEX. I'm going to go do another NCLEX review. And what happens in that NCLEX review for most of those NCLEX reviews what happens in that three, four day, five day event, they go through a ton of content. And you sit there and you're like, yep, I recognize this. Yep, I recognize this. Yep, you sit there for three, four, five days recognizing 
everything they're talking about and fooling yourself into thinking that you're ready. Remember, it's not the content that NCLEX is testing you on. It's the idea of doing something with that content. So if, if you're taking NCLEX a second, third time, fourth time, whatever, if you didn't pass it the first time, definitely get a hold of the app the um, the Saunders app make make those quizzes just a part of your day. They go with you everywhere, and then do something with the questions you get wrong. That doing part I can't overemphasize. And 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 NCLEX does a really good job of identifying whether or not you're 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 doing at at the level of a nurse. Do we have another question there? Yeah. Um... Another question we have here is how much of the NCLEX is OB or pediatric content areas? Those are areas that the student struggles in. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, peds and OB, that's definitely, um, and, and I so respect the peds and OB instructors, the peds and OB nurses. Many of you are headed out there into labor and delivery. Hats off to you. Mental health as well. Um, you have to remember that what, what NCLEX is going to do is see if you, they're, they're not testing you to be a pediatric nurse practitioner, okay? They're testing to see whether or not you can identify these concepts, these higher level concepts, even if you don't exactly remember the definition of a word, but you recognize that that child has a problem getting enough oxygen, you recognize that that mom is having a problem with perfusion, okay? And and so you as you're as you're practicing your questions, as you're practicing your questions, pay attention to that. And remember at the top of the uh, nurse think notes that related exemplars, related concepts. If you're dealing with a, if you if you just got a question wrong on labor and delivery, try to pause for a moment and think of okay, what other disease? Maybe even a disease where it's not a woman who's pregnant, what does this kind of look like? When you can compare it to something else, you're gonna save so much time. How much of the exam is on maternity, peds, OB? It's gonna, you, every single person is gonna have a completely different NCLEX experience. Some people feel like they got nothing but peds and OB. Other people, feel like, oh, I, I didn't hardly see any questions at all. And and most of us are somewhere in between. What they're doing, what, what NCLEX is doing is not saying, oh, it's time for a peds question or, oh, it's time for a maternity question. What they're doing is they're saying, okay, Tim, you just got this question correct, okay? And it kind of tested your ability to do a little bit. Now we're gonna give you a, a, a more difficult question and test your ability to do a lot. It's, they're gonna they're gonna be more interested in that doing than whether or not you've had 10, five, 15, 20, whatever, maternity questions, pediatric questions. So so yeah, you know, if in and the beautiful thing about the Saunders comprehensive review is you're gonna find those sections on maternity, you're gonna find those sections on peds. Some of it's going to be broken out. Some of it's going to be integrated. You know, go look for those questions. Go do those questions. Uh, again, identify what you don't know. But at the same time, it's going to be more about doing because they know that you're going to be a brand new nurse, not an expert in labor and delivery. So great question. Keep these questions coming. These are fantastic. Do we have more? Um, yeah, we have a, a few more here. Um, is there a lot of math on the NCLEX? Um, you know, the math on the NCLEX is, is, I would say, over the past two decades has definitely changed. And I, I don't want to say it's not there because there, there can be some significant math questions that pop up, but they are becoming a little less frequent. And, um, and, and here's, here's why I say that. They do a lot of research on people who have just graduated and people who have just passed NCLEX. And that research is showing us that fewer and fewer nurses are doing a lot of math as a part of their day-to-day -day operations. Now, here in Minneapolis, pretty much every hospital that I know of, you have to take some type of math quiz, math assessment before you even get an interview or, or get a job. But um, for the most part, 
um, you're, you're not going to see a ton of math um, on the NCLEX. I, I do caution you, though. Don't let that don't let your guard down. I do caution you. Be careful, it, you know, and this is why, again, Saunders does such a great job, this, this Skyscape Q&A app, because um, the math questions that you're going to see there are very focused, okay? Stick to the processes that you've been practicing for the past couple of years and, and just do the math that way. Don't try to learn. It's not time to learn a new way to do math. Stick with whatever, whether you're doing dimensional analysis or something else, stick with that process. Use that process on NCLEX. Good question. Okay. Um, let's see another question here. Do you have any tips on how to answer select all that apply questions? Yeah, absolutely. The tip number one, remember these select all that apply questions, when you run into them on NCLEX, um, they're going to be about what is the nurse doing? What is the nurse going to do? And so, you know, it, some people some people say oh just take each option one through six and go true false i i don't think that that's a good way to do it because you don't see a nurse standing there staring at his patient going true false true false true false you don't see that that and an NCLEX is trying to create an exam as if you were a nurse standing right there with a patient that had significant need OK, so so don't stare at the screen, go true, false, true, false, true, false. That that's that's setting you up for failure. Stare at the screen. Look at that. Select all that apply question on your on your app there on your phone, your iPad, whatever. And ask yourself, would the nurse do this? Is this something that should be done? Is this part of what a nurse does or is this part of what a patient should do? Use that word do a lot. OK, put yourself, try to create a picture of you standing in that clinical environment, standing next to that patient, listening to that patient talk. Does this make sense? Does this fit what this patient needs? So so I prefer instead of going true, false, true, false, because all that is is some test taking technique that is very questionable. I try to put myself in that clinical situation and go, yes. A patient could say that, or yes, a patient might eat that, and 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 talk about more about doing than the true false. I know it might be semantics, but again, if you can put yourself in the hospital, if you can put yourself in that community health clinic, that urgent care, it's going to help you out. It's going to help you visualize and 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 get 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 a better shot at that answer. The other thing I want to point out about select all that apply questions. They're either right or they're wrong, okay? A select all that apply question does not deserve five to 10 minutes of your time and anxiety and energy, all right? You run into a select all that apply question, if nothing else, take a deep breath, picture yourself in scrubs, standing right next to that patient, answer the question and get out of there. Don't, don't fret. OK, and you may need to practice this when you're using your Saunders Q&A app. When you're using the Skyscape app, make sure that you practice that strategy. Tim told me I can't spend five minutes fretting. OK, you answer that question and move on. All right. And, and, and I think that that's that's really important to remember. Good question. OK, I have another question here, Tim. Um, when preparing for NCLEX, is it better to do questions, read, or both? And how many NCLEX questions should um, a student review or do to prepare? Um, well, <laughs> how many questions? Well, there's, there's these research studies that I kind of question myself uh, that, that, that'll say anything from do three to 5,000 questions. In most of your programs, you've already done that many questions. Um, what, what I would rather, what I would rather see happen for you is, is create for yourself a good solid study plan. Okay. And this study plan, what happens in the study plan is, is you set aside a block of time at, at least five days a week. Um, if you're taking NCLEX in the next three to four to six weeks, at least five days a week, set aside two to three hours a day. Okay, and, and yes, if today, if you had to work a double, that means that, you know, it might be one of those days 
that you only do an hour instead of three three hours or so. But then the next day, you've got to get that three hours in. This is part of your job, okay? Think about think about the consequences of not passing NCLEX the first time, right? So I prefer to look at it more in, okay, I'm doing things with the questions I got wrong. It's about the time. It's about the doing. Some students get in the habit, some students will get in the habit of just clicking through questions, just click, 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 and just, you know, just going on and on and on. And, and I get it. There are those times you're sitting on the train, you're sitting on the bus, you're waiting for your kids to get done with whatever. Yeah, go through some questions. The nice thing about the Skyscape app is that um, it's going to keep track of those questions you got wrong. You can go back to them, do something with them, use that nurse think. OK, but um, but as far as numbers of questions, I think it's more about doing the numbers. Uh, most of you have already hit that three to five thousand mark on questions with your with your programs. And, and the other thing I'd like to say here, Kristen, don't wait for a couple of months to take NCLEX. You've been studying for NCLEX since the day you got into nursing school. Don't give yourself that two to three month break. Get in there, get that test taken as soon as possible. You get this, you get the Skyscape uh, Q&A Saunders app downloaded on your phone today, on your iPad, downloaded today. Get it going, okay? Your your Nurse Think Notes notebook will be there um, to help you start working with those questions that you got wrong. You just keep yourself in a solid exercise regimen until the day you take NCLEX. That's, that's what's most important. Good questions. Loving it. Do we have more? Um, yeah, we do have, um, how do you study for EKG questions? <laughs> um, okay, so here's, yes, you need to know your rhythms and um, you need to understand what rhythms to uh, focus on. And, and, and Saunders, again, when you hit that study button, when you're in the, when you're in the uh, cardiac sections, the perfusion sections, and you hit that study button, uh, you're going to be exposed to some of that. It's going to be, they're going to be the, the perfect ones to focus on. But here's, here's the problem that people run into. Oh, I can, I can identify a second degree block or, oh, I can, I can identify a third degree block or whatever. Um, the problem is they don't know what to do for and or with the patient because of the rhythm that they're looking at. Okay. So, it, when you look at, when you get a, an NCLEX question with a rhythm, you can bet there's going to be some doing involved. You want to be careful to look either in the stem of the question or if they're showing you a rhythm and, and giving you options, what's that nurse going to do because of that rhythm? Don't just go, whew, I, I remember Winky Bach. I got that all figured out. Don't stop there. You cannot stop there. That's what a technician does. That's what the person does that pushes around the EKG machine and pushes buttons. And that's not what a nurse does, though. A nurse thinks of the entire patient scenario, what am I going to do? Am I going to walk away? Am I going to implement some kind of intervention? Am I going to call a code? What am I going to do? And so you got to have that doing part in it. And this is where the nurse think notes can be vital. You look at a rhythm. You, it, no matter what rhythm you're looking at, there are three assessments that you absolutely can do, have to do, should do, need to do right now. You look at a rhythm, there are absolutely three interventions that you need to implement for this patient right now, okay? And that's what NCLEX is going to test you on. They're not going to allow you to stop and go, yep, that's a second degree block. They're not going to allow you to do that. Um, they're going to require you to step into that doing. So good question on the EKGs. Whoever you are, I'm giving you air fives everywhere. Uh, one more question. Does preparing for NCLEX help me as I prepare for exams in other classes like maternal child health and mental health? I think you might have touched base on this one a little bit, but yeah, a little bit. And you know, whether you're whether you're in an RN program or a PN program, the Saunders Skyscape app is going to help you focus. Okay, so let's say today um, you were in Foundations of Nursing and um, you just went through the five parts of the nursing process. Well, you come to your you come to your Saunders app, 
it's going to really help you focus. What do I need to focus on? Maybe today you were just in GI med surge and you're like, oh my gosh, there's so much information here. What do I focus on? The app is going to help you. Remember that study button. That study button is the very first button we clicked on. Whether it's on your phone, whether it's on your iPad, it's going to take you right to that information, whether you're in a PN or an RN program. Maternal child, the same way. Many times students get overwhelmed with maternal child. Sometimes your maternal child book is bigger than your med surge book. Um, or you, they'll add extra books to it. And you're going, oh my goodness, what do I do with this? The, the app is going, to help you, is going to help you with that process. What is absolutely essential? Go through those questions and then start to do something with it. Good question. And our, um, take one final question here. Um, how many okay. questions? Oh, wait, I had a couple questions here. Um, how many materials can you study from for RN? And how many questions should you do a day? Which I think you kind of answered that okay. by day is more you should block out some time and then however many questions you answer in that two to three hour period. But um, so how many materials should you have for studying from? And then ballpark okay. questions you should do a day. Sure, sure, absolutely. So um, here's here's what I would really recommend for you to do is is really um, it would take a lot. It would take a lot for you to convince me that you were using Saunders and, and you you were using Saunders and you completely exhausted it and you need another source to study. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself. A common theme when I talk to students who have failed NCLEX. I hear I've bought three, four, five different NCLEX review books. There's only one you need. There is only one you need, and, and Saunders has it covered. I know Linda Silvestri. I know the work that she has put into this resource. It's phenomenal, and it has exactly what you need. So, so definitely, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't start adding. I would be very careful with that adding. Um, when you think... When you think um, about about focus please try to stick with one resource that's your primary go-to review get comfortable with the language in that and that should be your saunders skyscape app um, this you can take with you anywhere you've always got it at your side if if your instructor is lecturing on something that's confusing you you're sitting in the back of the lecture hall going i am so lost that's when you open up your skyscape your saunders app you tap study, you look up the topic, and there you have it. Um, so I really do not encourage people to get multiple resources. It tends to cause more confusion than anything. How many questions per day? Whether you're, I, I would say, you know, all through nursing school, you need to give yourself a daily quiz of at least 20 questions in the Saunders Skyscape app. Do 20 questions a day. Um, my my friend uh, Karen, my co-author on the Nurse Think Notes notebook, thinks it should be closer to 50 a day. Whether you do 20 a day, whether you do 50 a day, do something with the questions you got wrong. Don't just glance over them. You now have information. Let me put it this way. A patient gets admitted to the hospital. How often do you take their vital signs? Do you take their blood pressure, temp, temp, pulse, respers? Do you do it once every two weeks? Do you do it once every week? You guys are going, this guy is nuts. We take a blood pressure. We do vitals once every 15 minutes, once an hour, once every two hours. Why? Because we do something with those vitals. We adjust a medication. We adjust a care plan. We, we do further assessment based on those vitals. Your Skyscape app is those vitals. It gives you those vitals. And, and why? Because you need to do something with them every day. So whether you're doing 20 a day or 50 a day, make sure you're doing that quiz every day. Make sure you do something with what you got wrong. Sorry, you pulled my chain, Kristen. I got on my soapbox and got carried away. That's fine. Uh, I had one more question pop up. Um, student has a hard time with who would the nurse see first questions. What advice do you have? The, the um, I'm sorry, say that again, the nurse. Um, ahead, I have Chris. a hard right. time with who would okay. the nurse see first questions. Oh, what advice do you oh. have? 
Got it, got it, got it. Thank you. Um, this is a very high level doing question. Who do you see first? And, and your practice, your practice is going to really help you out with this because you're going to start to identify those mistakes that you make, those assumptions that you make that are wrong when it comes to who should you see first. Now, the power of nurse think, the power of nurse think comes in those priority assessments, those priority interventions. And um, if you go to nursethink.com and you click on our YouTube channel, there is a student success video that talks you through this process of prioritization and that I encourage you to take a look at when you get a chance. But, but the idea behind um, picking the patient you see first, it goes right back to that focused assessment, that focused intervention. Okay, and, and if I've got five patients here, if I've got four patients here, if I've got two patients here, which assessments absolutely have to be done right now? And if I pick, if I pick assessment on this patient and not, um, not another patient, then I'm saying that, that yes, I have to do this right now above what I would have to do for the other patient. So it, it really does take creating, creating a habit of top three assessments, top three interventions that you can just quickly do subconsciously. And the only way you can create this habit is that every time you get a question wrong, you get a practice question wrong, you do it. You do that nurse thing. So um, again, take a look at that video on our YouTube channel at nursethink.com. That's going to help you out with some of that prioritization. Uh, thank you, Tim. I think that's all the questions we have for today. Um, do you want to okay. switch to the next slide? Yeah, um, here we go. We've got some information there and um, the different websites. Um, so the, um, the nurse think and the comprehensive NCLEX uh, examination titles are available on skyscape.com. If you go there, you can um, search Nurse Sync and you'll find those titles and we put together a promotional um, offer for them. Uh, if you have any other questions about Skyscape, you can um, go to see what we have for offerings at skyscape.com slash education. This webinar will be posted on demand by the end of the week, and you'll be reminded via email at um, skyscape.com slash nursingwebinars2018, um, but you will get an email as a registered attendee. Uh, if you have any questions or further questions that come up to mind, you can email webinar at skyscape.com, and we'll do our best to get back to you. I want to thank you for your time, and have a fantastic evening. Thanks much. Bye for now.